Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. Hey, everybody. So today we are going to talk about how humans and computers are similar in handling tasks. I'm sorry. I was trying to do something else. What would you say? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, everybody. So today we're going to talk about how humans and computers are similar in handling tasks. So let's uh, get started. And I'm Jackie from Copenhagen here with Joe from Dallas, Texas. Yeah. And this is the Automators podcast. Is that right? No. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> So anyway, we, this well, this was actually a really fun topic because we don't normally we've been really outlining bullets and having them planned, and Jackie and I were just kind of chatting uh, about doing so. And actually, ironically, uh, this time it, it was the other way where Jackie was like, "Oh, sorry, I you know I got busy doing something, I didn't pay attention," and uh, and I I do it to him too, right? We all do it. And first, let's start off with saying, which I know you've you've repeated too, Jackie, that humans think they multitask, right? But in reality, that's not really the case. There are multiple studies I've, I've read, not the studies per se, but um, people talking about those different studies that say that, yeah, humans really don't multitask that well, at least not when, you, when it comes to doing stuff uh, Consciously, because of course our body, our brain, brain do multitask. It, it makes sure that our heart is beating and blood is pumping and whatever uh, happens while we have a conscious thought. But yeah, the general idea is that we might think we multitask, but we do kind of like well, our favorite language here, our hotkey. We do switch from task to task. We might be listening while we're reading, um, but if what we're reading truly becomes hard to grasp, we might either need to read it again, or we might lose a bit of focus on what we're listening to. Um, listening is one of the few things you can actually do passively. So. While you're shopping, you could be listening to a podcast like this one, um, but you can't really be passively watching a movie because then you wouldn't be watching anything else, but you would still be able to listen for traffic or whatever. So you can do some things passively and people often use that to try and multitask. And I don't think that we're that much better, or we are probably in no way better than a computer at it. But yeah. Well, and, and so um, <clears throat> this reminds me of, boy, 25 years ago, maybe a little longer, I was in a junior college taking classes in uh, video recording and editing and, and stuff. And one of the things that we had to fake, kind of, you know, test do, was to pretend that we are... Uh, a sportscaster, the director of a sportscaster, and he has like 10 cameras where he is switching between them and keeping of a football game. And I did it for like five minutes and I was so wiped out, like in, cause it's, it was so intense. And the, the guy, the teacher said, some people, and, and this is where I still agree. Some people are just far better at it, right. Than others. And so for some people, it's not really that hard, or they're just much better at switching between them. And some, it's it just burns you out because it's man, it's very tasking to to jump around that much. Um, and back to your point between humans and computers and who's better at it. And, you know, the thing is with the program, you can often you know some way have an effect on how fast, how often do I switch between the tasks and programmatically do it. And you know, and I do think with humans, we do get tend to get better at it. Some people are better than others. Uh, but to your point, when something is very interesting, like this podcast, um, it's very hard to do something else. Yeah, and I, I of course, I, I haven't gotten any kind of schooling in how this stuff works. Some people would be able to know it way better than, than us, probably. But the idea of having cores in your CPU 
is uh, in a way there to actually help the computer multitask. So from how I have understood it, um, when a program task, whatever it might be, actually has something that the CPU needs to do, then it's given a slice of CPU time by the OS, um, not a slice of eight cores or how many cores your CPU has, but a slice of a single core CPU time. And the OS will then help and do its best to make sure that every other task gets slices as well. And that's one of the reasons having uh, the no batch line setting in auto hotkey and stuff like that and loops that don't have sleeps just going can actually bog down your computer is because you're asking the computer to do only your thing, meaning it can switch windows. It can't visualize where the mouse pointer is, stuff like that, because it's not able to multitask beyond the task that you have asked it to do. So similar to a human, if we're doing something that really needs our focus, other things do tend to be neglected. Yeah, yeah. And actually, another um, interesting situation would be what I what I will do is uh, and I now I thankfully because I don't think I, I th actually I think I did try this once with a regular razor, but I have an electric razor, and I will brush my teeth while I'm shaving. <laughs> Right. And what uh, it took me a while to realize, like, OK, what I can do is I can think about where I want my razor to go. But, you know, I can put my tooth, my toothbrush here and be brushing my teeth and then focus on the razor. But I can't I can't move my toothbrush purposely around while I'm deciding where to shave. But I can set one goal to put it here, leave it here and keep it there. But it was just funny. I'm like, you know, kind of like you're deciding with the, the different cores. I can give it something to do. But it's kind of like a, a subconscious command, like, okay, go do this. And then it's not still processing it. I'm not, you know, if I hear a beep, I'll switch. Oh, I need to move my section to another section. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. I'd, I'd say um, the kids have come home with, with a small task of this kind where you rub your tummy, uh, tummy, tummy, rub your tummy while you're clapping your head. The idea of actually making a circular motion and clapping at the same time, you can get into it, but the chance that you're actually just clapping or rotating on both, it, it's, it's, it's one of the small things that can show you how hard multitasking can actually be. And, and often I'm listening to like a podcast while I'm doing those other things, right? Back to your point of, you can shove more, you know, often at different channels, medi mediums. What would you call that? Um, you know, uh, sources. Inputs. Yeah. That's this, yeah, okay. Because um, clearly I'm still looking and doing other stuff, right? But, um, and that's what I was telling my son when I'm, because he's, he's getting close to be driving. And I said, you know, don't let me ever catch you doing what I do when I'm driving. I'm like, you know, I've been driving for 30, yeah, 35 years, whatever. Um, like I, I've, I know how long I can look away from the road for a, you know, it, it doesn't seem like it to you, but trust me, only after years and years of doing this, can I really do get a better job at multitasking and not screw something up horribly. Yeah. And, and if we stay with it, the, the driving idea is I have been driving for years and years as well. And I've had jobs that included driving and um, I've had jobs where I needed to bike, cycle, whatever you call that. Yep. Um, I've had jobs where I was uh, using a scooter, right? I've been in almost all places of traffic at given different times, uh, including uh, driving lorries and, and trucks and cars and tanks, but that's not the start. But the idea of just being able to be in traffic and no longer having to think about using the turn signal. I got stuff like this confirmed when my wife recently got her driver's license at an uh, older age than I got. 
and she was a new driver. And for her, remembering to include the turn signal when turning, other than having to um, see whatever else is going on, she was way more on in the given situation because to her having a known perspective of what's going on on the bike lane, what's going on with the other cars, what's behind me, what's in front of me, stuff like that, that just something you know while you're driving because you keep having a focus on it. But if I come to, um, let's say, an intersection and I need to go to the right, I would check my mirror, but I don't know, 89% of the time or whatever, I would absolutely know if there was something there. Already know, yeah, yeah. right. Uh, because why wouldn't I keep an eye on that while driving anyway? But yeah. yeah it's, uh, and, and again, it's it just gets back to learning how to, yeah, I think it takes experience and lots of doing it to be able to, to process things and not have to think about them, right? You do it. And we, you know what? Now that I think about it, um, what we're getting into now isn't necessarily as much as the um, multi-processing, but it's still related. But a long time ago, and I happen to remember this because I was wondering what in the world the name of this thing was, but we, we did a, a podcast talking about the different levels of, uh, what's it called? Um, not proficiency. But you know your expertise, kind of thing. Yeah. You know, there at the beginning you don't know what you don't know, and then at the the advanced stage you don't even have to think about what you're doing. You're such a pro, you can not even be focused on it and do amazing stuff. Uh, and, and so, yeah, I think it's still part in there, right? Of the more you do, the easier it gets to multitask um, because that thing that for your wife takes up much more of her working brain uh, CPU. Um, Gets pushed lower in our and people who've done it for a longer time because it's 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 just done automatically. Yeah, here in Denmark, or uh, um, cars are normally manual shifts. Mm, yeah. That's that's standard. Uh, automatic gears are less common, but uh, just the idea of actually listening to your car. And knowing when um, the, the time is right to shift the gears. That is something that when you start out driving, you use a lot of mental energy on keeping track of. Um, is, it, is it now over ramping, whatever? Now it's time to shift gears. Now I would say, sure. You know, you're shifting gears. It's not something that happens by magic, but you don't even need to actually think about when it's time. It's just something you do because anything else would be wrong. And <laughs> it's, it's absolutely experience. Well, and you know, what's interesting that I don't know, I don't know how this fits into it, but I can often tell if my car needs oil or if something, I mean, just by, cause I'm, I think I'm just a little more attentive to to certain details than, you know, at least definitely, that's definitely my wife, right? Like, I'll get in her car, which I'm almost never in. I get in, I'm like, what is that? She's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, that's a new sound. That's, you know, that's that's not right. Um, but it's, it's funny how I, I guess it takes experience um, you know, to, to start. And, but it's not, see, the thing is, it's not just experience, right? Because if you watch enough, uh, uh, um, what's his name? Um, the famous detective in London, you know, oh, Sherlock, Holmes. Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. yeah. You know, kind of things like, I, you know, I know that's based off a real person, right? His, his undergraduate professor or something, someone had this like level, very high memory on this and stuff processing. But um, there are different levels of people, right? And what they're aware of. And like, I, I don't know about you, but like, I often notice I'll, when people like change their hair or change the little detail, I'm like, I can't always put my finger on it, but I'm like, something's different about you. Um, like, uh, like when you started the, the podcast, we, we should have had that in the podcast, you know, that, that mask on. But, um, anyway, now, so back to with the, for those that, that care, um, with auto hotkey, right? Cause it's uh, back to, we alluded to it said auto hotkey in its own, the version L 
isn't multi-threaded, you know, multitasking, uh, but you can fake it with a, a, a timer, you know, fairly well, right? And in the live call I had last Friday, someone asked about a set timer, and so we kind of talked about it a bit, and it was, it was one of those things of like, yeah, it's, it's not multi-threading, but for most in purposes, it comes pretty darn close to it. And and you can build some very advanced um, event handling would be one way of putting it. So so a lot of people have this idea that they need two loops to be going at the same time. They need that thread, but I'd say, yeah, very complex things. It would be really, really nice. But for most things, when you're automating something a human should be able to do, that's probably the limitation. If you want to go over what a human would be able to do time-wise or, or handle, um, then you might be able to talk about it. But in most cases, when you're automating a human interface, there's probably no really good reason for striving for this multitasking bit because either you can optimize your code for the task at hand to be so quickly finished that that multi-thread you were uh, hoping to implement wasn't really needed you can fake it in other different ways because you can start other processes. But what would happen then would probably be that your one process needs to share CPU time with the other process. And then the OS would then just handle uh, the, the time slice on the CPU anyway. So is that multitasking? It's, it's in essence probably still just happening in succession. Oh, Jackie, yeah, I'm sure, if you have multiple cores, you can have stuff happening at the same even time. Even then, like at least in this example with SPSS, I remember it was a few years ago, but I was using it, and uh, they're like, "Oh, now we're multi-threaded, and now you can do some blah blah blah." So I'm like, "Well, let me let me test this," and I, you know, I spun out. I had a big, you know, uh, thing I wanted to run. And I was timing it, but I was also looking at um, not task manager, but I was using a you know a, a process explorer. I forget what it was, but I could see the different threads and what's going on. And even though everything said this is multi-thread stuff, I would run it, and it all ran on one one core. You know, I mean, there was no any multi-threading. And I'm like, and maybe again, I, I don't know, but I'm like, yeah. It, I think often you think it might be happening. Now, a different case where I got to say I was so impressed when I used Python. And I was trying to scrape like a hundred tickers, you know, from the um, stock symbols, you know, the, the values. Instead of like on a hotkey where you go and get one and come back and go to the next one, it sent them all out, you know, and pinged them all and was returning them back. And that hundred got done in a fraction of the time compared to with auto hotkey waiting, sending, waiting for a server, you know, reply to come back and do the next one. And it was night and day in the speed on that example. Um, I'll say yeah. that. I'd say on a computer with our current one, if you went small enough, fast enough, mm. um, heated to physical limits, and nothing is faster than the speed of light, um, you probably couldn't send the information to and from uh, the CPU and present it to whatever program process, whatever, um, at the same time anyway, because uh -huh. one package, one information, one byte, whatever way you want to put it, needs to come in some kind of succession because physics, right? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah and no matter what, when you get them back together, you got to, to your point, you got to make sense of it somehow, which means you're you're taking all the information and somehow getting it to fit in one way or another in order to, to present it. So yeah, yeah, it's true. So um, anyway, I thought that was a it was a pretty interesting idea overall of how similar humans and computers are in how we do stuff uh, with in, in multi-threading and, and is it really important? And, and you know, part of it, which is where I thought you were just about to say, Jackie, too, is it depends what you're doing. You know, the thing that we're doing, like with AutoHotKey, often this just doesn't matter at all, right? You wouldn't really notice a difference. 
But some things, it really can make a big difference. And you do, like actually, we've both run into this with the, something to do with IE, you got to do it, download a file, I think, and then mm -hmm. lock the script up, and then you can't even do anything. Versus FYI, auto hotkey H, which hotkey it demonstrated in our webinar with hotkey it, no, sorry, auto hotkey H, um, it has true multi-threading where he literally could have that message box pop up or dialog box pop up and interact with it because auto hotkey, the version we use, version one, uh, freezes up at that point, just locks, I should say. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's something that IE and the OS is, is kind of taking care of. It's saying the process thread that is uh, downloading here has to wait for the download to happen. So it, it locks the thread. And as auto hotkey is um, kind of pseudo multi-threaded or whatever you call it, it can start multiple threads, but they'll still wait on each other. You get that halting action. Yeah. But, but to your point, hey, we, we know what we often do is spin up a whole separate script that watches for that window and it takes care of it, right? I mean, that's the quick, easy approach. Yeah, because then it started now the process of whatever and uh, the OS will then provide a slice of CPU right. time for you. Yeah. Which, and that's the only thing if I'm gonna ever complain about auto hotkey, the, my biggest thing is the uh, single instance force isn't on by default because 99.9% .9 of everything I do, I always want that on. It's so rare I want it off, but like, okay, you know, it is important. It is great to be able to do, to say, hey, I, I want to have multiple instances of this thread, it's, it, but it's just so rare. I just wish that was the fault. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for hanging out with us. Uh, yeah. Comment here if you had any thoughts or if you got lost, you know, and didn't listen to us, write down what you were doing when you were supposed to be listening to us. <laughs> yeah, let us hear. We'll uh, focus on that. See you later. Bye. Yeah, bye.